Emily Wosker. She didn't notice the huge white tarpaulin. It fell, covering her from funnel to footplate. The ghost, it's got me. She steamed away as fast as her pistons could pump. Thomas thought Emily was the ghost, and he raced out of the smelting shed. The ghost is after me, cried Thomas. Harry and Bert thought Emily was the ghost too, and they raced away. Thomas was right behind them, and Emily was right behind Thomas. The ghost has got me. Harry, Bert, Thomas and Emily raced towards Tidmouth's sheds. Tidmouth's sheds was quiet and peaceful. All the engines were fast asleep. Thomas's whistle soon woke them up. It's Thomas, cried Percy. Something must be wrong. Suddenly he saw Thomas, Harry and Bert racing into the yards. Stop! He cried. Harry, Bert and Thomas applied their brakes. They stopped just in time. The ghost is after us, whistled Thomas. Percy was scared, but just then Emily raced under a signal and the tarpaulin flew off. That's no ghost, said Percy. That's Emily. The engines didn't feel scared anymore. But they did feel foolish. The fat controller arrived wearing his pyjamas. What is all this fuss and bother, he boomed. It has caused confusion and delay. But, sir, cried Thomas, the flatbeds were rattling. And we heard moaning, said Emily. And groaning, added Thomas. The fat controller looked at Harry and Bert. Do you know anything about this? He asked sternly. It was us, sir, Bert mumbled. For your punishment, you will go back and collect the iron at once, said the fat controller. Yes, sir, said Harry and Bert, and they rumbled away. Whenever Thomas and Emily went back to the smelter's yard, they knew there was nothing to be scared of. After all, there is no such thing as ghosts. It was all silly make-believe. Sorry, sir, Thomas puffed sadly. This time, Thomas shunted only five trucks together. He took a deep breath and chuffed away. Thomas puffed through the countryside. I will get to the docks on time, he cried, but the troublesome trucks were up to some of their old tricks. Hold back, they giggled, but this time there were only five trucks. Thomas biffed and bashed and bumped them, and the trucks weren't troublesome anymore. As soon as he delivered the first trucks, Thomas went back to collect the next five. His coupling smelled of kippers and his cabin smelled of cod, but he was working so hard he forgot all about the smell. At last he had just one more load to take. but it was nearly time for the ship to leave. Thomas raced as fast as he could. His axles ached and his buffers were bashed, but he got to the docks just in time.
Thomas was very happy to say goodbye to the fish. Then the fat controller came to see Thomas. I know you don't like the smell of fish, but you have worked very hard, the fat controller said. You really are a useful engine. Thomas was proud, but he still had the smell of fish in his funnel and he couldn't wait to be clean. So he puffed off to the washdown. <laughs> Arthur and Salty were already there. Getting clean is lovely, puffed Arthur. Best part of the day, said Salty. Especially when you smell of fish, said Thomas. Puffed on. The train started to feel heavier and heavier. His traction rods were rattling more than ever. Thomas stopped at a junction. James was waiting in a siding. James thought the band sounded very jolly. If you want to uncouple some trucks, he said hopefully, I could take them for you. No, thank you, gasped Thomas. I can do it all on my own. He didn't want to miss out on any of the fun. Thomas steamed on. But every huff and every chuff got harder and harder. Thomas passed through the next station, but he was almost out of puff. Thomas wasn't having fun anymore. Then there was trouble. With a horrible creak and a terrible crack, Thomas's traction rods broke. Thomas stopped with a jolt. Suddenly, it was very quiet. Thomas felt very sad. Thomas's driver telephoned for help. Even the performers practicing in the field didn't make Thomas feel better. Thomas wished he had shared the heavy load. Soon, Percy and James arrived. James brought new traction rods and Percy brought hay for the horses. But Thomas still felt miserable. I wish I'd shared the work with you, he said sadly. Don't worry, puffed Percy. We can all have fun now, said James cheerfully. And he was right. While Thomas's traction rods were replaced, they all enjoyed watching the circus performers practice. Then, Thomas shared out the trucks. Percy took the horses, James took the performers, then the band started playing. This is fun, puffed Thomas. All three engines blew their whistles and the long and jolly train set off. Later, the friends watched as the big tent was put up. Thank you for helping me, puffed Thomas. Sharing your work makes things much easier, but sharing the fun is the best fun of all. And everyone agreed. Shh, said James. Don't tell Thomas, said Henry. Thomas felt more left out than ever. It wasn't fair. Everyone knew what the surprise was except Thomas. Humph! If they won't tell me, I don't want to know, he huffed. Thomas steamed crossly away. He puffed as far as he could. At last it was time to show Thomas the surprise. But no one knew where Thomas had gone. Please find him, Harold, Edward puffed. I'll do my best, said Harold, and he took to the air. Thomas was parked in a siding. He was cold and sad. Why was he the only one not to know what the surprise was? 
If only they would tell him. Then Thomas heard a noise. It was coming from the sky. It was Harold the helicopter. There you are, old chap, he called. It's time for you to collect the children and to see the surprise. The children, puffed Thomas. Yes, it's a special thank you for keeping the lines clear of snow. Thomas was delighted. Finally, he was going to find out what the surprise was. So I wasn't being left out, cried Thomas. Of course not, said Harold. The children are waiting for you at Wellsworth Station. Thomas loved pulling carriages full of children, so he raced away. Soon he arrived at Wellsworth Station. Thomas collected the children. He puffed through the snowy countryside. The children were very excited. They all wanted to know what the surprise was. Thomas turned down the branch line. Soon they arrived at a country village, and there was Thomas's surprise. A huge Christmas tree was standing in the village square. Its lights shone and its baubles twinkled. And at the bottom of the tree were lots of presents. There was even some tinsel for Thomas. It's the best surprise I've ever had, Thomas puffed happily. <laughs>